Welcome back with you, we have another again from in-depth tech reviews and in today's video I'm gonna show you the best iOS 15 features that I wish I had in Android 12. Apple and Google did an incredible job this year to enhance the user experience and both provided us with plenty of new features in each OS, but they are entirely different too. In this video I'm gonna show you what's missing in Android 12 and later on I will create a separate video for what's missing in iOS 15. There are some features that I will not talk about like Siri and live text because I already covered them in separate videos that you can find the links in the description below. So without further ado, let's jump in. And the first one in the list is focus. In iOS 15, you can create different focus profiles. Each one will entirely change your phone to match your usage throughout the day. You can set each profile to show specific home screen pages, receive notifications from specific apps, allow calls and messages from certain people, turn on the profile automatically at a certain time, location, or while using specific apps. And there are other profiles that can turn on automatically when you start exercising, gaming, reading, or you just create your own custom profile from scratch if you need to. Not only this, but you can choose to share your focus status in messages and other supported apps to let people know that you are not available. Sync your current focus mode across all your Apple devices so the whole ecosystem will adapt to your preference. In contrast, stock Android 12 is using the traditional Do Not Disturb feature that gives you control over your notifications only, either if they are from people, apps, or the operating system. You can also create certain schedules that have their own notification settings and they get activated automatically based on certain time frames or your calendar events. While it looks similar to iOS 15, but there are a lot of missing features that make iOS 15 approach more useful. Like there is no option to choose which home screen pages to appear per schedule, it doesn't share your do not disturb status with others in messaging apps, it doesn't support syncing with other devices, no automatic activation based on your app's usage, and there is no profile or a schedule for exercising and reading. Also, iOS 15 will give you the ability to activate any of these profiles at any time from the control center. While in Android 12, you can activate the Do Not Disturb feature as a whole, and the schedules only work if they are within the time frame. You might also think about the focus mode of Android 12. It might have the same name as iOS 15, but it's totally different. This is just a basic feature that allows you to choose which apps can send notifications if the focus mode is turned on which is a smaller version of the Do Not Disturb feature. So iOS 15 raised the bar here and I hope Google will consider improving the Do Not Disturb feature of Android 12 in the future. The next feature to talk about is notification summary. In my opinion, Android is the king when it comes to managing notifications, but the notification summary feature of iOS 15 did give Android something to compete with. The feature will allow you to get the least important notifications in patches instead of being distracted by them all the time. So you can go to settings, notifications, schedule summary, and choose which apps to include. Then you can choose how many times a day to receive your summary. It ranges from 1 to 12 times, and you can even set a time for each one. This will make unimportant notifications a lot less distracting. In Android 12, you can snooze notifications to be delivered later, but you must do this for each and every notification every single time, which is inconvenient. But with iOS 15, you set it once and forget about it. And now it's time for today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by EasyOS Ringtone Maker. Are you bored of your iPhone's system ringtones and want to create your own? So Ringtone Maker by EasyOS is created to solve this issue for you. You can create a ringtone from any song or video on your computer, search YouTube for the video you want, or paste the song link from SoundCloud. All you need to do is to choose the video, song, or file you want to create your ringtone from, choose the part you want to use as a ringtone, modify the volume and the fade in and out effect, add extra animal voices if needed, give a name to your ringtone, then click on export, and push to iPhone. The ringtone will be transferred to your iPhone in a matter of seconds. So let's take a listen at the newly transferred ringtone. So, it worked. The app works with pretty much all iPhone and the iPad models as shown now on the screen. You can start your free trial and get two ringtones for free, or choose one of the three unlimited plans. To know more, all the links will be in the description below. Now let's get back to the review. Next, copy and paste items. Now on iOS 15, you can drag and drop text, photos, links, or files between apps. Just hold the item with one hand, open the other app, then drop the item where you want. 
Some people might argue that the traditional copy-paste will be easier instead of using two hands, which is kinda makes sense. However, I think this feature will be more useful on Android than iOS. Imagine that you have two apps in a split screen, it will be much easier for you to drag and drop stuff between them instead of using the traditional copy-paste system. Google showed something similar for Android 12 in the I.O. event, so I'm expecting this one to arrive in future builds. Another feature in iOS 15 that will make copying text a bit easier is the ability to use the live text anywhere on your iPhone. Just double tap on any text field and you will see a new option called text from camera. Tapping on it will launch the camera in a split view to start copying text from things around you, which is something I didn't see in Android 12 just yet. Next, Safari. And there are three new additions that really caught my attention. Apple redesigned Safari in a way that makes it much easier to use. First, the address bar is now at the bottom of the screen, which is perfect for one-handed use. In addition to some cool gestures, like swiping on the address bar to switch between tabs, swipe all the way to the right to open a new one, swipe up to access the tabs view, swipe down to minimize, and the tap on it to maximize. Chrome on Android does have some of the address bar gestures like swiping to switch between tabs, swipe down to access the tabs view, but it doesn't open a new one. These gestures will be more useful if Chrome's address bar is more reachable like in iOS 15. But instead Google is using a new tab switcher that only appears in tab groups. That makes things easier for sure, but still the more reachable address bar is a win. The second feature is the ability to create tab groups and give them a name, which is gonna make it easier for you to spot the tab group you are looking for, and this is something missing from Google Chrome. And finally, Safari extensions support. That will extend its features even further, but there isn't much available right now in the App Store. All I can see is add blockers, but when developers start creating more extensions in the future, that will be very useful. So I'm curious to see how Google will compete with these three new features. Now let's talk about Photos. The Memories features of Photos in iOS 15 improved a lot. First, it looks great and with a simple tap of a button you can change the memory style by choosing one of the automatically created presets in this full screen and nice looking interface. And if you want to create your own style you can pick the song you want from Apple Music and choose between 12 different filters. In comparison, Google Photos only offers memories without any music or effects, plus there is no way to edit the memory. However, if you want to create something similar to Apple Memories, you need to do this yourself by selecting the photos and videos you want, then you choose to create a video. But this feature doesn't integrate with any music service like YouTube Music for example, and instead you get a list of predefined soundtracks or the ability to choose an audio file from your local storage. So I hope Google will create something similar in the future. In addition to the redesigned memories, in iOS 15 you can search for photos in a spotlight search and I found it to be very convenient in some cases. Stock Android still doesn't have a system-wide search capability, however as per the leaks Android 12 is expected to get the same functionality in the future, so let's wait and see. Next, Apple Messages. It's one of the most popular messaging apps among iOS users because of the amount of features it offers, and with iOS 15 you will get even more. And the biggest change is the shared with you feature. The idea is to have everything shared with you available in the place where it belongs. If someone sent you photos, you can see them in the photos app in a separate shared with you section, the links will appear in Safari, songs will appear in Apple Music, movies and shows will appear in TV Plus app, same goes to Apple Podcasts, Health, and more. The only downside I see it only works with messages. So if your main chatting app is WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, you won't be able to take advantage of the feature. But this is how Apple usually do stuff. Most of their OS features work only with Apple apps. So if Google created a similar feature for Android that works with third-party apps too, that will be a great addition to Android 12. Besides the shared with you feature, Apple Messages has this amazing photo collections that makes your conversation tidy and more appealing to the eye. You will get two different designs depending on how many photos in each set. Sets with more than three photos are scrollable with the ability to see them in a grid view. Also with one tap you can save the whole set to your photos library which is very convenient. None of these features is available in Google Messages just yet. And overall it's lacking behind when compared to Apple Messages. I really hope Google will step up the game and close the gap between the two with the final release of Android 12. Next, Apple Maps. Apple is trying really hard to keep up with Google Maps for a long time now and I don't think they are close just yet. However, there is one big change that really impressed me 
which is the new 3D view of Apple Maps. It's currently limited to four cities only, but when it becomes available more widely, it will be a huge deal. Let's take San Francisco as an example, with the 3D view activated on both. Look at how everything in Apple Maps looks true to life, it makes me feel that I'm there, and I can visualize exactly how the place looks like in reality. I'm sure that Google has much more information than Apple when it comes to maps, and I think it will be easier for Google to do something similar in the future. Not to mention that this view will make the navigation look much better and easier to link what you see in the map with real life. Next, iCloud. And there's a lot to talk about here. Now when you buy a new iPhone, you can use iCloud backup to move your data from your old iPhone, even if you are low on storage iCloud will grant you as much storage as you need to complete a temporary backup free of a charge for up to three weeks until you finish the transfer process. Apple also announced iCloud Plus. This will give you four new features with no extra cost. The most useful one is Hide My Email. This feature allows you to create unique and random email addresses that forward to your personal inbox to hide your real email. So you can use these addresses to sign up for third-party newsletter or websites and if any of them started to spam you, go ahead and deactivate the email address entirely and save yourself the hassle. Next, the iCloud Private Relay. When you browse the internet using Safari, it ensures that the traffic leaving your device is encrypted so no one can intercept and read it. By this, websites won't be able to use your IP address, your location, or any browsing activity to start profiling you. The third feature is creating a custom domain name for your email address and invite your family members to use the same domain if you want to. And finally, HomeKit Secure Video. If you have a HomeKit compatible security camera, now you can record, analyze, and view your footage in the Home app, and none of the recorded footage will count against your storage. The feature requires either a HomePod, Apple TV, or iPad running as a Home Hub, and a 50 GB iCloud storage subscription, or more. Unfortunately, none of these features is currently available in Android 12. Next, the Mail app. There isn't any groundbreaking features here, but Apple took the mail privacy to the next level. In addition to the Hide My Email feature, which is part of iCloud Plus subscription, now you can choose to hide your IP address in the Mail app settings, and by this no one can track your activity, location, or check if you opened the email message or not. We all know that Apple always add more privacy features to iOS year over year, and Google took some steps in the same direction with Android 12. But I didn't see anything related to the email privacy in the upcoming version of Android just yet. Last but not least, let's talk about FaceTime. It got plenty of new features, but only some of them are missing from Google's native video calling apps, Google Duo, and Meet. And the first one is SharePlay. Unfortunately, FaceTime is not available in my region to show you a hands-on experience, but in a nutshell, SharePlay will allow you to watch movies, and shows or listen to music with your friends with plenty of collaborative features like live text and audio chatting, shared playback controls and music queue, multi-device support so you can have your FaceTime call on the iPhone while watching the content on Apple TV and more. FaceTime will also enhance the audio quality by supporting the special audio to get directional sound in calls as if it's a face-to-face -face conversation. The voice isolation mode to block any background noise or the wide spectrum that brings all sounds in your background to the call, which is something you might need in certain scenarios like music classes or let your friends hear everything happening in the background. How good or bad these features are in real life requires extensive testing, but on paper they sound like cool features. So this is the list of features in iOS 15 that I wish we had in Android 12. We are still waiting for more from both companies in future builds, so maybe things will change. But I will save my final comparison between iOS 15 and Android 12 after the final release of both. Android 12 also got plenty of new features that are missing from iOS 15, so expect a future video from me to talk about them. Up until then, I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.